Hey guys, this is Claudia here from The Bookkeeping Experts. I've been a bookkeeper for a long time and people come up to me with all kinds of questions. One of the most popular questions is re related to the apps and QuickBooks Online. And one that we touch a lot is Square. So we had a few videos prior to this one on how to set up Square and there has been an update. We have a video on that update. As well, if you haven't watched it, make sure you, you watch it. Today, we're going to cover a few issues that people are finding with the new updates uh, and some that I've seen with my clients. Um, first of all, um, I'm going to go through the process of um, what to do if Square is duplicating your transaction. So if you had Square prior and then you install it on the new update, um, there has been situations that I've seen with some of my clients where if, if the other Square app, the prior, the original Square app has not been disconnected properly and you install the new, uh, the new update, the transactions are coming through both ways. So basically duplicating all your transactions and getting out of control. So what to do in this situation? So hopefully this video will help people that are having issues with that. Uh, first of all, you will have to disconnect your Square completely, okay? Now on this account, I don't have it, but on the left-hand side, you'll see Square. You wanna click on Square, and you wanna click on my, I'm sorry, on the left-hand side, you'll see Apps, uh, and then you're gonna click on My Apps, and then you're going to see square and you're going to disconnect it from there. Okay, on the left hand side menu under apps. We don't have it on this account because I, don't, I can't do it on this one. Now, uh, on this account I have the new update for square, right? So in order to disconnect that one as well, if there is anything wrong with that, um, you want to click on the uh, transactions or banking, whichever one says for you is the same thing. And then app transactions, on the right hand side where there's a little gear menu, not the top one, but the little gear menu, it will open up here, okay? If you need to make changes uh, to your uh, Square transactions, such as, you know, maybe you have a different account that you're sending the money to or um, instead of individual transactions you you want to bring them as lump sum and by the way what is the best way is that individual transaction or lump sum the answer is that it depends it depends on your business if you have several transactions definitely lump sum is the best way to go because you don't want like all those little transactions and then try to match them. It, it's, it's crazy. So um, you want them to match the amount to match exactly what happened in banking. So whatever, mon whatever bank you're sending the money to, you want to mirror that. You want to reflect exact, exactly the same thing. So you want to put that account here and you want to put it as a lump sum. Okay. Now, if you have large transactions square and you want those individual transactions because you want to uh, match the clients and so on and so forth, you have specific clients, then yes, you want to do it individually. So, and usually, you know, those are businesses that have large transactions and they will come individually to the bank as well. But you want when you link your account, your Square account, with QuickBooks, you want to do whatever happened in banking. So if you receive lump sum, you want to keep this as lump sum. So if you need to make corrections, um, like I said, you're going to click on the little gear menu and then the pencil right over here. See that? And you can change the bank account. Let's suppose that now you're using a different bank account. So you can, you can change it right from here. Now, before you change here, you want to make sure that that account is linked in QuickBooks and everything is fine in QuickBooks, right? Not just change it here and then those transactions are not going to come through. 
Okay, square balance account, I have it as square, it's gonna stay like that, and I'm not gonna change anything here. Um, item track, uh, by I have it by item na name, or you, you don't have to track if you don't want to. Okay, and I like to uh, track my customer by customer name, and then save it. Okay, so this is the location. There's other things that you can change it as well. If you click on item, you can change that. Okay. All right. So you can make changes if you want to change square customers and put something else you can. And then you have some advanced features as well. So these are for tips. Um, if you want to set up tips, especially if you have restaurants or things like that and you want to set it up, you can do it right here. Right? Okay. So if there's a specific discount or shipping cost, this is where you would be setting up right here, okay? And the merchant fees, we call it square fees. So we're not changing anything, but I wanted to show you that that's where you would be changing. If you need to disconnect because, um, like, actually, individual transaction is not going to let us change to batch transaction here, if you see. It's not, it's not, it's not an option, right? So if you need to actually change that, you need to disconnect square and connect it back again and select batch transactions. So that's one of the only ones. It does say it here. You click on the pencil, but it's not an option. So if you take a look here again, the transaction view, which is here, is set up as individual transaction. It's not available to change. Okay, so if I wanted to change to batch transaction, I actually need to disconnect Square and connect it again and select batch transaction right there. Okay, we're not going to do that right now. But if you need to disconnect, you would be uh, clicking right over here. And here you want to say, um, well, I do have transactions over there. So it's saying that bef before I do this, I want to uh, view those transactions. But we're not going to do that. I just wanted to show you. And then it's going to ask you, why are you disconnecting? You know, if, you know, if there is any error, you're going to select error, or whatever it is, and then you'd connect all over again. So we're just going to cancel here and done, but um, this is how it's done, right? And once you connect Square, you know you know how it works. Now, then, once, once again, I wanted to emphasize, I emphasized on the prior video that one of the best things about the new update with Square is that you have control over those transactions. So it works kind of like banking. So if you're familiar on how banking works, you actually receive transactions from the bank and you can, at this point, you can select the transaction, you can exclude it if it is a duplicate. Now, keep in mind, you only exclude a transaction from a bank if it is a duplicated transaction. It happens sometimes, especially if you have apps linked, not necessarily Square, but other kind of apps like Expense apps. Sometimes it does duplicate the transaction, right? Or one way that it also duplicates is uh, if you disconnect your, your checking account and then you connect it again. But when you disconnect it, you disconnect it where there were transactions already accepted, let's say, until August. And then when you reconnect, you reconnect prior to that date. Let's say you choose like to start uploading transactions in June. So you have some duplicated transaction right during that time. So if, if you want to disconnect your account, first you have to zero out your bank account, right? And then you disconnect. And then when you reconnect it again, for whatever reason, if you're having issues with the bank account, make sure that you will bring transaction only from the date that you no longer had transactions floating uh, into QuickBooks. But anyhow, I wanted to <laughs> mention that the reason why I went that way is just to tell you 
that if for whatever reason you do bring those transactions, you can actually exclude. But those would be the only reasons why you would exclude a transaction because it's a duplicated transaction. If you just exclude transaction from here, then when you reconcile the account, you can't reconcile because you're missing transactions. So just be careful with that, right? But I wanted to tell you with, with the, the new update with Square Banking, right? So you click on transaction or, or um, banking, and then you, you select tab transaction. It works the same way. So those are the transactions coming through right I can add those transactions but if for whatever reason there is duplicated transaction I can exclude them right so we're just gonna add those add those add those and then when I go to banking I can match those square transactions right see that <clears throat> So those are um, usually you don't want though this is not the same one that we saw there but we saw this one which was a transfer so we're just gonna match this okay so this one and I this one see that so those are the transactions that I added on the app transaction from square and then I went back to banking because that's where the money go and then I would match there. All right, so it's not, it, it's really good and it gives me control because if for whatever reason I see that Square is duplicating my transaction on this new update, I can always exclude that. On the old way, you couldn't exclude. They would all come into Square banking and then it would record as a transfer into your checking account. Or it would be sent to undeposited funds. You would require the deposit and match it in banking. That's how it worked in the past. That's no longer the case. So if you do have the, the old uh, link or synchronization with Square, you do want to disconnect it and connect it with the new update because it does give you a lot more feature and a lot more control over those transactions and how you're going to match it in banking. All right, so if you have any questions, so I, I wanted to touch base on that because that's one of my most um, frequent questions from clients. Uh, it's pretty much apps in general, and Square is a big one. Square, uh, Shopify, <laughs> PayPal, PayPal, <laughs> for sure. We have a video. We don't have a video in Shopify yet. We'll come up with one of those how to synchronize and how to accept and how it works because each app works differently but this is how square works we're very very excited about the new update um, i know that you're gonna like it as you use it it's becoming better and better and for you who use square all the time uh, you know if you have restaurants or or whatever and you use square on a constant basis it's it's a great thing so once again, wanted to make sure when you synchronize Square, and if you have any question on, on how to uh, link your Square account with QuickBooks, take a look at my prior videos, and it has more detail information. So, but when you synchronize, you want to do it as a lump sum, okay? And if you're having issues, like I said, that this is how you solve it. Uh, you want to disconnect it completely. Go on the left hand side, go on apps, my apps, disconnect square from there, and then you want to reconnect it from, from here, okay? Or if you have both ways connected, both ways um, duplicating transaction, disconnect everything, and then reconnect it. Um, if you have any questions, please write down below. <laughs> and um, make a comment. If you like this video, please uh, click on the like button over there. Uh, we want to continue bringing videos like that for you to help you out with your challenges in QuickBooks Online and make sense of your finances. Understanding your finances is the key to, your, to the success of your business. 
Um, we want to help you understand your finances, QuickBooks, so that you can use it as a tool to go to the next step. And I hope this was very useful to you. If you like it, share, like it, subscribe to our channel so you can receive the most updated information uh, that we bring on a constant basis. And until next time, keep smiling.